Greetings friends. Please consider this message with all seriousness. And share with as many as possible, so they may have the choice as well. When will we allow you to see us? The fact is, you can only perceive what is being shown to you. The diminishing of many natural resources is inevitable. And no long-term collective remediation project has been launched. Ecosystem exhaustion mechanisms have exceeded irreversible limits. The scarcity of resources, whose entry price will rise day after day, and their unfair distribution will bring about fratricidal fights on a large scale. From the hearts of your cities to your countrysides. This is the reason why, more than ever in your history, your decisions of today will directly and significantly impact your survival tomorrow. Hatred grows, but so does love. That is what keeps you confident in your ability to find solutions. However, human behaviors, formed from past habits and trainings, have great inertia, that leads to a dead end. The critical mass has not been reached, while the work of sabotage is being carried out cleverly and efficiently. You entrust your problems to representatives, whose awareness of common well-being inexorably fades away before corporatist interests. These putative servants of the people are far more often debating the form than the content. Just at the moment of action, delays accumulate to the point when you have to submit rather than choose. This inertia is in many ways typical of any civilization. What event could radically modify it? Where could a collective and unifying awareness come from that will stop this blind rushing ahead? Tribes, populations, and human nations have always encountered and interacted with one another. Faced with the threats weighing upon the human family, it is perhaps time that a greater interaction occurred. There are two ways to establish a cosmic contact with another civilization via its standing representatives or directly with ordinary individuals. The first way entails fights of interests. The second way brings awareness. The first way was chosen by a group of races motivated by keeping mankind in slavery, thereby controlling Earth's resources, its gene pool, and the mass of human emotional energy. The second way was chosen by a group of races allied with the cause of the spirit of service. Some years ago, we did introduce ourselves to representatives of the human power structure but they refused our outstretched hand, on the basis of interests that were incompatible with their strategic vision. That is why today, individuals are to make this choice, by themselves, without any representatives interfering. What we proposed in the past, to those whom we believed were in a capacity to contribute to your happiness, we propose now, to you. Few of you are aware that non-human creatures have been involved in the centralizing of power in your world and in the subtle taking of control. These creatures do not necessarily stand on your material plane, which is precisely what could make them extremely efficient and frightening in the near future. However, also be aware that quite a few of your representatives are in fact fighting this danger that not all alien abductions are conducted to your detriment, and that resistance also exists amongst those dominance-oriented races. Peace and reunification of your peoples would be a first step toward harmony with civilizations other than your own. That is precisely what those who manipulate you behind the scenes want to avoid, at all cost, because, by dividing, they rule. They also rule, 
over those who more visibly govern you. Their strength comes from their capacity to instill mistrust and fear. This considerably harms your very cosmic nature. This message will be of no interest, if these manipulators' influence were not reaching its peak, and if their misleading and murderous plans did not materialize within a few years from now. Their deadlines are close and mankind will undergo unprecedented difficulties for the next ten cycles, slash years. To defend yourselves against this aggression, that bears no face, you need at least to have enough information that points to the solution. Here again, appearance and body type will not be enough to tell the dominator from the ally. At your current state of psychic development, it is extremely difficult for you to distinguish between them. In addition to your intuition, training will be necessary when the time has come. Being aware of the priceless value of free will, we are inviting you to an alternative. What can we offer? We can offer you a more holistic vision of the universe and of life. Constructive interactions. The experience of fair and fraternal relationships. Liberating technical knowledge. Eradication of suffering. Controlled exercise of individual powers. Access to new forms of energy. And finally, a better comprehension of consciousness. We cannot help you overcome your individual and collective fears, or, bring you laws that you would not have chosen. You must also work on your own selves, apply individual and collective efforts, to build the world you desire, and manifest the spirit to quest for new skies. What would we receive? Should you decide that such a contact take place? We would rejoice over the safeguarding of fraternal equilibrium in this region of the universe, fruitful diplomatic exchanges, and the intense joy of knowing that you are united to accomplish what you are capable of. The feeling of joy is strongly sought in this universe, for its energy is divine. What is the question we ask you? Do you wish that we show ourselves to you? How can you answer this question? The truth of soul can be read telepathically, so you only need to clearly ask yourself this question, and give your answer just as clearly, on your own, or in a group, as you wish. Being in the heart of a city, or in the middle of a desert, does not impact the efficiency of your answer. Yes or no? Just do it as if you were speaking to yourself but thinking about the message. This is a universal question, and these mere few words, put in their context, have a very powerful meaning. This is why, you should calmly think about it in all conscience. In order to perfectly associate your answer with this question, it is recommended that you answer after another careful reading or listening of this message. Do not rush to answer. Breathe, and let all the power of your own free will, penetrate you. Be proud of what you are. Then do not let hesitation get in the way. The everyday problems that you may have, can weaken you. To be yourselves, forget about them for just a few minutes. Feel the force that springs up in you. You are in control of yourselves. A single thought. A single answer can drastically change your near future, in one way as in another. Your individual decision of asking in your inner self, that we show up, and in broad daylight, is precious and essential to us. Even though you can choose the way that best suits you, rituals per se, are essentially useless. A sincere request made with your heart, and your own will will always be perceived by those of us to whom it is sent. In your own private polling booth of your secret will, you 
will determine the future. What is the lever effect? This decision should be made by the greatest possible number among you, even though it might seem like a minority. It is recommended to spread this message in all invisible fashions, in as many languages as possible, to those around you, whether or not they seem receptive to this new vision of the future. Do it using a humorous tone or derision, if you feel this will help. You can even openly and publicly make fun of it, if it makes you feel more comfortable. But do not be indifferent, for at least you will have exercised your free will. Forget about the false prophets and the beliefs that have been transmitted to you about us. This request is one of the most intimate that can be asked to you. Making a decision by yourself, as an individual, is your right, as well as your responsibility. Passivity only leads to the absence of freedom. Similarly, indecision is never efficient. If you really want to cling to your beliefs, which is something that we understand, then forcefully, say no. If you do not know what to choose, do not say yes, simply because of mere curiosity. This is not a show. This is real daily life. We exist. We are as alive as you. Your history has had plenty of episodes when determined men and women were able to influence the thread of events, despite their small numbers. Just as a small number is enough to take temporal power on earth and influence the future of the majority, a small number of you can radically change your fate as an answer to the impotence in face of so much inertia and so many hurdles. You can ease mankind's birth to brotherhood. One of your serious thinkers once said, Give me a handhold and I'll raise the earth. Spreading this message will then be the strengthening of the handhold. We will be the light years long lever, and you will be the craftsman to raise the earth as a consequence of our appearance. What would be the consequences of a positive decision? For us, the immediate consequence of a collective favorable decision would be the materialization of many ships in your skies and on earth. For you, the direct effect would be the rapid abandoning of many certitudes and beliefs. A simple conclusive visual contact would have huge repercussions for your future. Much knowledge would be modified forever. The organization of your societies would be deeply upheaved forever in all fields of activity. Power would become individual because you would see for yourself that we exist as living beings, not accepting or rejecting that fact on the word of any external authority. Concretely, you would change the scale of your values. The most important thing for us, is that humankind would form a single family, before this unknown we would represent. Danger would slowly melt away from your homes, because you would indirectly force the undesirable ones, those we name, the third party, to show up, and then vanish. You would all bear the same name and share the same roots. Mankind. Later on, peaceful and respectful exchanges would be thus possible. If such is your wish. For now, he who is hungry cannot smile, he who is fearful cannot welcome us. We are sad to see men, women, and children suffering to such a degree in their flesh and in their hearts when they bear such an inner light. This light can be your future. Our relationships could develop in stages. Several stages of several years, even decades. As would occur. Demonstrative appearance of our ships. Physical appearance beside human beings. Collaboration in your technical and spiritual evolution. Discovery of parts of the galaxy. At every stage, new choices would be offered to you. You would then decide, by yourself, to enter new stages, if you think it necessary to your external and inner well-being. No interference would be decided upon unilaterally. We would leave, as soon as you would collectively wish it so.
depending upon the speed to spread this message across the world. Several weeks, or even several months, will be necessary, before our great appearance, if such is the decision made, by the majority of those who will have used their capacity to choose, and if this message receives the necessary support. The main difference between your daily prayers to entities of a strictly spiritual nature, and your current decision, is extremely simple. We are technically equipped to materialize. Why such a historical dilemma? We know that foreigners are considered as enemies, as long as they embody the unknown. In a first stage, the emotion that our appearance will generate, will strengthen your relationships on a worldwide scale. How could you know whether our arrival is the consequence of your collective choice? For the simple reason that we would have otherwise shown up long ago, at your level of existence. If we are not the yet, it is because you have not made such a decision explicitly. Some among you, might think that we would make you believe in a deliberate choice of yours, so as to justify our arrival, though this would not be true. If that were the case, what interest would we have in openly giving you access to these opportunities? For the benefit of the greatest number of you? How could you be certain that this is not yet another subtle maneuver of the third party to better enslave you? Because one always more efficiently fights something that is identified, than what is kept hidden. Isn't the terrorism that corrodes you, a blatant example? Whatever. You are the sole judge in your own heart and soul. Whatever your choice, it would be respectable and respected. In your current situation, the precautionary principle that consists in not trying to discover us no longer prevails. You are already in the Pandora's box that the third party has created around you. Whatever your decision may be, you will have to get out of it. In the face of such a dilemma, one ignorance against another, you need to ask your intuition. Do you want to see us with your own eyes? or simply believe what your authorities say? That is the real question. After thousands of years, one day this choice was going to be inevitable, choosing between two unknowns. Why spread such a message among yourselves? Translate and spread this message widely. This action will affect your future in an irreversible and historical way at the scale of millennia. Otherwise. It will postpone a new opportunity to choose until several years later, at least one generation, if that generation can survive. Not choosing, stands for undergoing other people's choice. Not informing others stands for running the risk of obtaining a result that is contrary to one's expectations. Remaining indifferent means giving up one's free will. It is all about your future. It is all about your revolution. It is possible that this invitation will not receive your collective assent and will be disregarded. Nevertheless no individual desire goes unheeded in the universe. Imagine our arrival tomorrow. Thousands of ships. A unique cultural shock in today's mankind's history. It will then be too late to regret not making a choice and spreading the message, because this discovery will be irreversible. We do insist that you do not rush into it, but do think about it, and decide. The big media will not necessarily be interested in spreading this message. It is therefore your task, as an anonymous yet an extraordinary thinking and loving being, to transmit it. You are still the architects of your own fate. End of message